for the, uh, like the toasters, our first tour we did was the toasters. Sure. And uh, the toasters were a great band for us because the toasters are very, well, especially during that time, the toasters were such a musical band. You know what I mean? Like, as far as we can our own players. That form set, yeah. Form players, the uh, bass players, yeah. 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 They were perfect for us. Same instrumentation. Sure. And and similar vibes and we just uh they were like tons and tons of children. And then when they when they decided we will be released that we'll be a moon and fucking said we're taking you guys out full country, doing your album like the right way. So that that tour was the greatest learning experience for me for a while because just seeing Badass pro horn players like this Sledge and I like got a lot of famous people. Sure. He would take me aside and like be like, listen, you play like an 18 year old. Wanna play like a man or not? <laughs> so I was like, well, you know, I was kinda hoping to like get like, you know, maybe a 20 something year old girl in, but okay, show me some man stuff. It was wonderful. Like I mean like our horn section especially learned learned so much from from, from them. Just about how how we listen to each other. And yeah, I, that's that's why our classic arm section is still like I, I call it the best arm section in the business period. What I always said to folks uh, was that uh, oh you've never heard of Spring Hill Jack? Well, I'll put it this way: when they uh, went on hiatus, I'll call it hiatus. Um, the trumpet player went to Real Big Fish. The trombone player went to the Boston's. The sax player went to Less Than Jake. Those are the bands maybe you've heard of, and which means maybe you should go back and listen to this other band. I think it says a lot about the horn section. Um, if you if you don't mind saying more, I'd love like what advice would you give to a horn player who is 18 years um, If you have if you have the opportunity to play shows, play shows. Because I mean, like it's it's like anything. It's learning by failure. So you'll learn what doesn't work really quick. And then like you'll you'll meet people and you'll hear what they do. You'll, you'll bite off of them. That's all music is. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's 12 notes. That's all we got. So. You know, you, you just kind of like feel it out and like once you in, you know, you put your time in, like sitting around by yourself for a few hours and before you know it, it'll be two years later and all of a sudden you sound like your own version of what you think a, trump, a trumpet player or a horn player should sound like. What were some, uh, uh, you know, maybe not just trumpet players, but, you know, horn players you looked up to when you, you know, when you were first starting out? In Boston, definitely Vinny from Vince Caliban. Uh, definitely Dennis from the Boston. I mean, those guys, like, I'm not even a trombone player, and, I, and you just you just watch them and, like, listen to them like this. They, they're so melodic, and they, and they just never miss notes. And it's just amazing, like, just to be able to watch them night after night after night. So that, that's what, what did it for me. Just getting to be exposed. Dana, Dana. What's up? Dana from the Cherry Pop Daddies, he also took me aside. We were on a tour with them, and we had a day off at Ron's sister's house. And Dana and I spent like three hours in a basement just like, just show me things of, like, dude, this, this will make you sound like a real trumpet player. Was it Motley? Oh, it was a Motley, like, oh, the first time we saw them? <laughs> I, we played, we I, did, a, I didn't even want to go on, we had to go on after them. We were on, after Oza Motley. Yeah, like uh, we were on tour with uh, the Cherry Pop Daddies and the Pie Chasers. Oza Motley was taking our place, but for one night on Halloween 98 in Toronto, they were on the tour, we were on the tour. And the first fish was across the fish street. Fish was across the street, so there was that. Um, Oza Motley got there about 20 minutes before doors because they had like plus problems or something. So they show up and we stand there and everybody's like, you're gonna love Oza Motley. So we sit out there, watch their sound check, and it's like, oh. And then we were like, well, they sound awesome. So we watch their set and they do the whole, like, everybody dancing, like, everybody having a great time. And Free Hill Jack just goes into the dressing room and we're like, man, how are we gonna follow that? It's like, you know what we do? They don't rock. <laughs> so we rock. So you're right. Yeah. It's like Prince and the Revolution at the uh, club. At the uh, yeah, like first day at the time, we were like, yeah. all right, well, I'll show you how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we, actually, that's the night we, like, we, it was Halloween, and uh, who was it, Chris? Papa's mask? We, yes, we were luchadors for Halloween that year. Yeah. We were luchadors. Oh, you know, it's just kind of 
kind of funny now because like, it's like, man, I hope this is hard. didn't think we were clowning them. <laughs> right. Right. But at least that was but under my yeah. But uh, Yeah, but uh, as for their trumpet player, like, was talking yeah, to me for a while. I see him, I saw him a couple, like, years later in New York. And he's like, dude, I'm going to move from Bob's room at Toronto. I was like, weird, awesome. Welcome to New York. I was living there. Sure. And we just had some new like, we had a couple conversations about just playing. You know, you're always going to, like, shoot the shit with somebody in your team. Right. And if, and if they happen to be a lot better than you, then good. You'll learn something. Listen, listen to older Play with the greats. Play with the greats. That's what you do. Any, any, uh... Likewise, and were there any, I don't want to say, you know, not necessarily mentors, but folks you got to meet on the road and folks who sort of helped you build your, uh, you know, build your skill set and do what you do. All right, there's, there's a couple people that showed me a couple things. Sure. John McGuire, the colonel from the Amazing World Crowns, showed me a bunch of rock boys. He'd always, he'd always show me great little things and whatever. Jason Moss. Jason Moss from Cherry Pop Daddy. Cherry Pop Daddy. You show me great swing style, you know. Bucket show me great like bluesy, um, but also like I guess it would be like school. I guess it would, just listen to records too, or just like the, the nice upstroke of the scholars. Ethan from the Scholars, he's a he's a great Ethan Durkle. Yeah, yeah, dude. What a great guitar yeah, player. Yeah, he. he uh, Played some great stuff. Well, aside from Spiel Jack, like Los Angeles is a sure, yeah. huge, huge uh, inspiration and like showed me awesome shit. Was uh, Chris from The Living End? Sure. Yeah. Chris was just like, you know, it's like basically like Brian Setzer reincarnated. But like, you can play any kind of music, just not rock music. Great songwriting. So. Tell me about you know a tour in you know, you know the, we're talking about the fight. You know, things are going great. Mm -hmm. We got a really great show in Boston. You know, whether it was at the Middle East or somewhere else, you know, whether it's a band well, or whatever. I mean, we did throw down here. So what, what, what year do you remember? Ninety six, ninety sixty two. Yeah, it feels like. No, no, it was like. Uh, I think it was like 97. Sure. 96 or 97. We played the throw down here. It was amazing. That was the first. There's a lot of, that's my big word show. for like amazing. For a like, brilliant show that I've ever like, been a part of. Like, because we always played on the stairs. Sure. Yeah. And, and those were nights nice, like us, like Thumper, um, back when Big wow, D was doing, like yeah. little tiny kids band. They were like, like you know, 19 or whatever. But yeah, we used to play upstairs all the time. And then uh, TT's. TT's next door. That was great. That yeah. was uh, that's where we met. met the, no, no, met no. The, no. Was, we uh, met the Cherry Papa Daddy's there. I don't know where. Was it Steady Ernest? Steady Ernest. That was a good band that we used to play with. Yeah, it was, I think that was a show. Yeah, Steady Ernest. Mm -hmm. What were your favorite bands to play with? In Boston or? In Boston, if you don't mind. Well, I used to be, in, I was the original bass player for Skabooza. Didn't know that. Yeah. And, yeah. And we did, we did a wonderful tour with uh, Skabooza and uh, Isaac Green Scholars. Scholars. Yeah. And, and that was, uh, that was good. It was nationwide. The and the Alstonians were like, they, they, taught, they, they helped teach us how to drink. The Alstonians taught you how to drink. Well, no, 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 taught us as a band how to play drum. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, now the, well, this Boston, of course. Sure. But, uh, um, Bostonians have been with a lot. And I knew it was a stayer in this. Yep, uh, always Bim. Bim. Dan Vital is always super, super nice to us. We had a lot of great time with Bim. Yeah. My brain doesn't work that way anymore. Too many you know, lost you know brain cells. Every time we had these shows, especially back then, we got like kids in their twenties, right? And they just pop down beer and liquor for me every night. This is so. Here you go. Here's your tub of beer and your bottle of whiskey. Here's your fucking drinks. Go for it. And you're like. Boo, boo, boo. 
and the next thing you know, you're like, what? Who did we play with last night? Wow. What did we do? I don't remember. And then everyone comes up to you like years later, like, I'm chill, man. You're like, no idea. It's like, I think I vaguely remember showing up for that show. Yeah, it, you know, it was like, I think it was like Van Halen or something. Sure. Eddie Van Halen was like, I don't remember, like, it was 10 years of my life. I do, I do remember, like, always playing Middle East for, for like, a good, a good few years. We played at least two, like, two fall shows here. Always, like, in October or sometime right around Thanksgiving. And then always, like, a springtime show, right? I mean, because, you know, Boston's, like, right in our backyard being in Connecticut, so. Oh, I got a great Boston show that we did. What? De La Soul. De La Soul. Yeah, we opened yeah. up for De La Soul at Wentworth. With college over by uh, Fenway. Yep. That's wild. And that was, we were so excited because we were like, wow. I mean, it's off the sky thing, but like, we were like, wow, we could like, fucking. Some, somebody who we, somebody like, who everybody knows in like, like somebody different genre of music and we all well, listen to Daylight. Well, we love Daylight. Right. Yeah. So. right. It does. I mean, like, yeah, at the time and right. now. So. I remember when all oh, y'all would have this on your answer machine. <laughs> so awesome. It's insane. Did the students dig you? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. What, what, college, what college kid doesn't like a band that like runs around, rocks out, and like just is genuinely like a party band? We used to, we used to play a lot, a lot of cracks back in the day. <laughs> It's actually weird, like, all ska bands, especially at that time, had to, like, not had to, just like, fraternities would always be like, we want you to play, and then the booking agents would be like, you need to play that, and would be like, alright, and they just set you up really nice, they give you, like, hotels, they give you like, to stay, and they give you some money, and, and like, when, when, you, house like, when you're on the road, and there's like, you know, other times, like, Snap in the stick to eat, man. Right. Oh my god. And you're like, oh, man, fast. You're like, ah. It's like, but you're getting paid this much money. It's like, oh, sure. And then, like, every, every like, frat, like, then like, it always up, it ended up being fun. Yeah. Sure, but, but you had hesitant going. Yeah, you're hesitant. Well, because these are the guys that we never hung out with ever growing up. Yeah. But it was like, always like, it was always like, I don't know if I want to do that. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's pretty funny because you think, like, people. You know, just you can't judge a person. Sure. I mean, there's like certain times you're like, I don't want to be with that. And you're like, oh, wait, they're actually nice to me. So, it's like, it always wait, works out. Like, people respect people. People, nice. used to, people used to do that to us. Say, I don't want to hang around with you because you're like a band geek or something like that. Right. Or like, I know he was a skater, so. Yeah, like, well, you know. I don't know where I ever got the idea of giving people who would not be like a chance. <laughs> Ah, some black guy somewhere. Sure. But like, I think always, like our big mission was to bring good times. Right. You know what I mean? It's always, sense. it's always like, in my mind, thinking about it, it's always like, try to bring good times. And then like, sing soulful songs, or, you know, songs that come from like, the heart, but also songs that like, you know, you just dance to like, Dancing was the big thing. I was like, oh, I want people to come to shows and just dance at a good time and let loose. And also, like, we'd sneak in, like, you know, we'd always sing. It's always, we'd joke around, but, like, but half our songs are, like, really depressing. If you, like, listen to lyrics, like, you know what I mean? What is hey. it? It's like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean, you know, like, happy songs about... Like, like, oh yeah, these songs sound really, really happy. It's like, oh, you mean that song that Ron wrote about the girl who cheated on him? Yeah, well happy. Like how he's like near suicide? That's when he wrote that song. Oh, well there's such a reinforcing message. Yeah, don't kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You know, on that topic, right? Like songs about whatever, but sort of delivered in a in a fun way. Like, because what drew, I, I think about what drew me to Scott, and I'm really curious what drew you to playing not just Scott. Like, I understand I, rock and roll, but but well, you know, Scott particular. Well, I grew up like my parents, well, like my mom in particular. I guess my father too. My, 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 my biological. 
uh, grew up listening to like, like a lot of Motown. Sure. And like 60s stuff. A lot of 60s soul bass, dance, you know, songs. A lot of songs about girls, a lot of songs about love, but like, there's always that like longing feeling in them, or always like, you know, whatever. And that was for me, I was always like, oh, I love those songs. Like, it doesn't matter what it was, it's that fucking beat, it's in, and like, I know Mike was huge. It's funny, I got, I was like Motown, Elvis, all that kind of stuff, and like, Mike was like, grew up, his parents were like big Beatles. I grew up. I grew up in, in like you know the projects, like listening to like top forty radio. But at the same time, I always like the weird quirky songs on the yeah, radio. Like yeah. I never listened to like you know just any one thing in particular. Like I, I my time, my childhood was a hodgepodge. And then, I, I I first saw Steve and Jack when I was fourteen, and I was hooked at the first halftime bus they hit. And then and then the whole thing is that after that. It became like, you know, in the 80s, it was the two-tone stuff. I mean, it was two-tone, two-tone stuff, it was like, I didn't even know, I was like even listening to Sky at the moment. I was first listening to it. Sure. Madness, especially. And stuff like that. I didn't know I liked Madness or like the police yeah. until I was like 15. I was like, yeah. was oh, like, I, grew, I just grew up and these songs were playing on the radio. Yeah, there's like the police, you know, it was just like any kind of reggae or any kind of... Ska beats that were coming in. It was always like, oh, I love this shit. It's just awesome. And like all the time, we're you know growing up, like in, you know, early teens, like, you know, thirteen or whatever, fifteen. It's all hardcore shows. It's all hardcore shows. It was all like just fucking you know shooting down. You know, all that shit. It was just like that. And then bands like came in. Like, we were, there's a place called the Anthrax. I don't know if you know. Uh, there's a place called the Anthrax. All hardcore bands just play there, all hardcore bands. Uh, all types of bands. And then, like, all of a sudden, a um, band came in. I, like, the first show I saw there was Fugazi. And I was like, I love Fugazi. And I was like, Fugazi. Oh, Fugazi. Oh, my God. And they fucking killed me. You know, there's a reason why waiting room is like waiting room. Oh my god, but there was like a change. It was not as much this. Sure. It's just like, well, because if you started doing that, they would stop. It was, yeah, it would yeah, we all, we all, we all start becoming back and back about groove, about like something there. And then the band came through called New York Citizens. And they came in and put on like a funnish show. They were just like this real fun band. Where did you first see them? At the Anthrax. The New York Citizen came in and I was like, totally like this band is like the best band. Because it was such a like fresh, fresh air. There's actually another hardcore band it's called Underdog. That used to, you know, they're kind of like the 24 7 spies and Underdog. And like, a, yeah, well, Bad Brains brought in the hardcore and reggae, but like those were, those were bands like any time they were breaking the hardcore and the reggae come in, or like you know, whatever. Because it was like, oh. and then all of a sudden it just like formulated my young brain. Like at that time, I was like, I want to know more about this. I want to know more about like what this fucking sound is. What what is this? Well, it makes me feel something. So I want to learn more about it. So I just started just like fucking going back and just be like, keep quiet. And without the internet, you're like, oh, you have to be like, what is that? You know, so I went in you there to, and just you like, had to go to a record shop and ask. Yeah, you had to be like, you had to be like, whatever. Tell me more about these yeah. records. Yeah. So yeah, well, yeah, way back, there. way back in the day before the internet. So uh, yeah, from that, it's like two tone, soul two tone, hardcore, reggae bus, weird systems. Toasters came in, and then Boston. I saw the Boston's at the Moon. Ah, the Moon. The old Moon. The predecessor of the Tuna. Yeah, Fernandez Moon. I saw Nirvana there too. <laughs> but uh, super small place, super small, and it's just like energy, fun, good times, and then started 
going deep and deep and deep and deep and sort of figuring out what this music was. And then, you know, tracing back, you know, Jamaican roots, up to the two tone, up to what it was at. I was saturated with West Side. So I wanted to know more. Give me more. I couldn't get enough. More. I wanted to know every fucking thing about it. What, and, what record stores were you hanging out at? Well, there's a at the time there was a place uh, there's a place in New Haven, Cutlers. Cutlers. Cutlers was a place. Uh, there was a place. It was funny. Uh, Dave Carsages, our old drummer, who passed away. His uh, his next door neighbor was also went to school. His father owned a store in a mall. I can't remember the name of it now. Oh my God, Michael. I can't remember. It's been so long. But they always had awesome shit. They would get, 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 like, my case of Danbury, uh, no, 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 Secret Sounds. Oh, Secret Sounds. And Secret there was Secret Sounds. Oh, yes. That was it's funny, because Secret story. Sounds is, I, I went in there when I was like, I had a huge crush on uh, Julia Hatfield at the time. She was playing a show, and I was like, I'm trying to write a row. Hey, Julia, I like you. Wanna get some coffee sometime? <laughs> <laughs> you wanna get some coffee sometime, Julia? I like you. <laughs> How did that pan out? She's like, yeah. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, come to the show at the Paradise. I'm playing. I was like, I'm moving to Boston. And she's like, yeah. And it was like, went up there. And like, the 21 plus show. I was like, can I go to what was the scene like, uh, you know, you know, when you moved from Connecticut to Boston? Not me? Yeah, for you. The, the, the reason why I moved to Boston was uh, Adam Shaw, uh, who now is a tour manager in Boston, he worked here for the least. And he used to be a fan of Spring Jack. And I got a call after Spring Jack ended. He's like, yeah, I'm going to play. Why don't you guys come to play the uh, band with me, whatever you call the band. Went up and started working with them. We started working on stuff. We came to Los Angeles. here in Boston. So I moved to Boston to work on Los Angeles. And then that's all. 